Divine Truth Feedback Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. Jesus and Mary give personal feedback to Catherine Kent on the subject of reincarnation, belief systems and emotion. This session was recorded on the 16th of December 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. This is part two. Okay. So, so we're relieved now, so <laughs> <laughs> we're relieved now, we can come back to the discussion. I find sometimes that if I've got to go to the toilet, I talk faster <laughs> and faster and I already talk too fast, <laughs> so I have to slow down. <laughs> yeah, so we, we're midway through <coughs> Catherine's um, preamble to her first question, which was about... Um, yeah, so let's continue with that preamble yeah, and then... Yeah. We'll so, discuss the different problems with the preamble and then we'll answer the question answer the quite question. directly. <laughs> well, I think we've kind of answered it by now, but we'll, we'll get to it. Yeah. All right. So um, she goes on to say, Now, if as adults my children were to become willfully disobedient and make choices that cause the family pain. See, all of a sudden there is another emotional issue for mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. Make choices that cause the family pain. Mm. Mm. There's a problem here. This is, how, this is how most people on the planet view families, in fact. Mm -hmm. Just because the family are in pain, it doesn't mean that the choice of the individual is out of harmony with love. Mm. And in fact, there are many times when the choice of the individual is in harmony with love, but the family still thinks they are feel some pain as a result mm -hmm. of the choice. As soon as a child breaks an addiction with a parent, they feel pain, Correct. the parent, so, when in fact it can be the most positive thing for the child and the parent. Correct. So, so let's define what causes the family real pain. Mm -hmm. What causes the family real pain is also the same thing that causes the individual real pain, mm -hmm. and that is an action taken out of harmony with love. Yeah. That, that is what causes real pain. Mm -hmm. so, so even just that little inflection that yeah. she's got there is demonstrating the unhealed emotional condition that she has. She yeah. basically feels that if you cause the family pain, yeah. then you've done something that's out of harmony with love. Yes. She also makes note of children being disobedient when that is not the feeling I have with God. God doesn't want me to obey her no. god wants me to explore and experience my free will, free will in harmony with love yes. in harmony with her laws correct um but that is very different to obeying well, obedience is a very christian concept again right. and, and also yeah. a very family-based concept that's yes. why christianity created the concept was because families have parents who believe that children should be have a responsibility to obey their parents yes. and in fact in the bible it states in some places in, in the in the old testament in some places it actually states that if you disobey or disrespect your parent that you should be put to death <laughs> and most parents actually agree with that yeah. or to a degree to you know degree. of some kind and there are still parents today to this day mm -hmm. who would actually put their child to death if they disagreed mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so and god certainly doesn't do that mm -hmm. either yeah. so so this is an, again an indication of an unhealed emotional condition that exists on the earth that causes damage to and causes children to actually get into a worse condition yeah yeah. Yep. Okay. And she says um, a query that if her children were to become willfully disobedient and make choice, choices that cause a family pain, this would be a result of my own poor parenting? <laughs> Question mark. No. No. Mm -hmm. Why would it be a result of your own poor parenting? It doesn't have to be. It, it could be the result be. of yep. the child exercising its own personal will to ha make a choice that is out of harmony with love. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be the result of a person's poor parenting yeah. that a child actually does make that choice. Mm -hmm. Of course, a, a, par a poor parenting will help the child yes. make that choice, yes. Yes. <laughs> certainly. Yeah. But, it, but, but God yeah. is a perfect parent and many of God's children have made that choice. Yes, that's very true. So it's not the result of poor parenting. Yeah. It's the result of making choices based on will that are out of harmony with love and desiring to do so. Mm. Mm. Okay, so she's saying if her kids did that, they were mm -hmm. willfully disobedient and made choices to cause the family pain, then I would likely, at great pains to myself, insist that they live elsewhere where their unloving choices would not destroy the family. Yeah. Why at great pain to yourself? Exactly. You, if you've given them the gift of free will, one part of that gift means that there would be no pain to yourself 
by asking the child to live somewhere else. Yeah. There'd be no pain. God, God does not experience pain mm -hmm. when a child of God chooses to do something out of harmony with love. God is impervious to that. God, of course, is sensitive to the fact that the child feels pain. Yes and has caused pain for other children, mm -hmm. but God herself does not feel the pain. Mm -hmm. If God did, imagine the amount of pain that God would be in, because God would be in pain. 7.2 billion people on this planet, the majority of them are sinning every single day. Imagine the pain God would be mm -hmm. in if God felt that God had to make choices that would restrict you mm -hmm. know, the, their operations and feel personal pain doing so. And also... Um, it's another addiction, another is. parental addiction. Feeling pain, restricting a child and feeling personal pain because of it is a parental addiction. Mm -hmm. you, you want the child to obey you. That's yes. the pain. Because also, if, if, we want, if we have children and we want them to understand their, the gift of free will, um, when we restrict them, in order to assist them to understand that gift, that's a loving action and it should that's, not cause us pain. It wouldn't cause us pain at all. No. No. And in, in fact, fact, if it does cause us pain, it indicates we're in addiction with yes. our children. Yes. Yes. So um, this rationalisation that Catherine said, that if the children were willfully disobedient, made choices, she'd insist they live elsewhere mm -hmm. so that they can't destroy the family. Mm -hmm. Hence the existence of heaven, hell, and or levels thereof making perfect sense to me. Mm -hmm. Now, the point I wanted to make about this is that God's love is not absent in the hells. God's love God's, is not absent anywhere. That's what I mean. God's love earth. is not like absent. She makes the comment later, here. if you could read it, it's, a, it's a, over the next page, about the earth being a, somewhere... God-forsaken. Yeah, God-forsaken Oh, that's place. within the next... The hells are sentence. not a God-forsaken place. Yeah. The, the earth, earth is, is not, not a God-forsaken God place. place. Yeah. God is available to every single person here mm -hmm. instantly. Mm -hmm. Instantly. And actually the laws and the, that create, that govern everything that happens on earth and in the hells and in every sphere of the spirit world yeah. are built on love, yeah. God's love. God yes. created them. Yeah. And in fact, the hells are the most loving place for someone who's willfully sinning yes. to that live. love created for their own selves to live, yes. actually. Yes. But the laws that, that govern that process are loving. There is no, as you say, God-forsaken place. There's yeah. no God-forsaken place no. in the entire universe. No. And once... With one exception. Go ahead. The human soul. Yes. Who, through its own choice, chooses to, to be, be God-forsaken. God yep. A very important point to understand. Because, human, because humans have been given the gift of free will... We have the choice to choose to be God forsaken. And it's not that God forsakes us, it's that we choose to remove ourselves from God. To, to reject God, to, to reject be absent God, from God, to, be, to, de to even deny God's to, existence. Correct. And it, as, as you mentioned earlier, as soon as we make a different choice to that, then we're not then anymore. We're not. We're not without God, and mm. we're not without the possibility of receiving love no matter where we are. Correct. Yeah. Even in the depths of hell, even on earth. Mm -hmm. It's all available, mm -hmm. right? So, which yeah. is not to say that suffering doesn't exist for people who live on Earth. That's created by the use of other people's will out of harmony with love. But as soon as we, but even, even then, if if you personally were in a sinless state, mm -hmm. even when other people created uh, through their choices yeah. an unloving condition, you personally would not feel harmed by the choice. Yeah. So. Yep. Even that is not strictly true. Yes, true. The reality is once yep. you're in an one minute condition with God, you don't feel the negativity of a choice mm -hmm. that, that somebody else makes even. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's why God doesn't feel it when we make it. Yeah. So, so, you know, again, there's a lot of suppositions here that are based on what I would call unhealed mm -hmm. human emotion, emotion that's based upon personal suffering of the individual yeah. that they've yet to release, yeah. that cause such reasoning. Yeah. yeah. But what I'm getting at earlier was this whole concept of family, doing things for the sake of family. There's huge emotional injuries in that, mm -hmm. huge emotional injuries in that. Mm -hmm. God, doesn't, God, God doesn't desire for us to desire love for the sake of other people. Mm. Mm. 
God desires that we choose love because it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And also it's going to create not only, it's going to create happiness for all, Mm -hmm. not just other people. Mm -hmm. In other words, we don't have to have a sacrifice in order to get other people's happiness without having our own. Yes. And there's this common concept in most Western countries that are Christian based religion, that they have this concept that, you know, the only way to have making the family happy is to be self-sacrificing. Yeah. It's not true. God doesn't expect self-sacrifice. It, God knows that if every single person lived in harmony with love, there'd be no need for self-sacrifice, mm-hmm. in fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so essential. Mm. Yeah, okay. So she's saying that she understands this through this reasoning, mm-hmm. the existence of heaven and hell and or levels thereof that mm-hmm. makes perfect sense to her. Yeah, but it's However, not because it's not of the premise that she's basing it yes. on. Yes. Mm. But not to send a fresh, precious soul to this place without full development and knowledge prior to. Hang on a sec. Every soul is precious, whether they're fresh, undeveloped, or developed, or mm-hmm. any state in between. Yeah. Like, let's get away from this whole concept that, that a child is precious and an adult's not precious, mm-hmm. or that an adult is precious and a child is not precious. Mm-hmm. Like, the reality is every person is precious. Every person, whether developed or not developed, conscious or not conscious, from God's perspective, they are all God's children and they're all precious to God. Mm. So we need to get away from this sort of unequal viewpoint of souls. Mm. And just because a soul is a child, it doesn't make it uh, um, no longer have responsibility, the same responsibilities or the same feelings as, as an adult child. From God's mm-hmm. perspective, mm-hmm. from God's perspective, all are equal, mm-hmm. including those children that are yet to come here, mm. including those children that are yet to be consciously aware of their own existence. F- from God's perspective, they are precious to him still. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, he wouldn't have created them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Okay. So this brings her to her first question. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) How is sending a previously unconscious child of God to this God-forsaken place a loving act? Right. So firstly, we've said that firstly, this is not a God-forsaken place. Mm -hmm. God's available here just as God is available everywhere. Mm -hmm. We've secondly said that God doesn't send people here. People, through their procreation, through their desire for procreation, the use of their will, draw the souls that God Mm -hmm. has created to here in order to incarnate. Mm -hmm. God didn't send us here. God created a mechanism by which we can come here. Yeah. Right. Thirdly, all the badness on and the negativity on the planet, which causes her to believe that's God forsaken, yeah. has actually been created by humankind rejecting God, yes. not the other way around. Yes. And therefore, the only way it can be remedied is by humankind no longer rejecting God. Mm-hmm. Right. And fourthly, it's a it's a natural law based process. It's not like God's going to start a law and then humans you know, tens of thousands or millions of years later cause, a, cause some kind of problem mm-hmm. that that caused then God to say, oh, well, I can't send people to that earth anymore because yeah. those people <laughs> have done the wrong thing. You know, he's going to continue to to deliver the same laws and, 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 and enforce the same laws as is always enforced. Mm-hmm. God doesn't change his laws just because humankind think they can, humankind think they can break it any time they want. Mm. And in fact, coming here to have the opportunity to learn about our free will is a it's loving a opportunity. Gift. It is a loving act. Yes. It's helping us go from being unconscious to, to conscious. conscious. And, However, oh, and there are plenty, there are billions of sp- people who have now become spirits mm-hmm. who are very, very happy that mm-hmm. they have lived a life here on earth. Mm-hmm. And there are also millions of spirits who have been aborted or miscarried mm. who wished they could have remained yes. on earth. Yes. So, so to have that opportunity, to have that to opportunity, even here. though they know the condition of the earth. Yeah. So, so again, this is her unhealed, sad, sadness, sadness. that is causing her to make these kind of presumptions. Yes. Mm. And if everyone on earth now just decided that they wanted to engage with this lesson of learning about how to use their will in harmony with love, then we wouldn't then have a problem. It would be extremely pleasant for a child to come here. It would be beautiful to be incarnated. Beautiful. Beautiful. The environment would be beautiful. The family they're incarnating (laughs) into would be beautiful. They'd have the freedom of expression while at the same time learning law, 
but yeah. at the same time learning just God's laws, not humankind established laws that are aware of Or addiction or guilt or duty or obligation or None sacrifice. None of those things or, or sacrifice things. or a lot of the things yes. that, that, that Catherine, Catherine has indicated she would do on yeah. her children. Yeah. None of those things. And as a result, that child would, would grow up having a free expression of its own will yeah. while at the same time understanding what it means to have a loving and an unloving expression of its will and the yes. consequences of either. And that is certainly God's desire. Yes. God yeah. designed all of these laws so that quickly, rapidly, yeah. people could learn the how to use their will in harmony with love. And The problem then, in our own arrogance is we're not very clever. No. That's the problem. We're not going, yeah, all this pain and suffering means that maybe we've made some choices. Mm -hmm. We're going, oh, all this pain and suffering, let's come up with an ideological stance that, allow, that explains it away so we can keep having it. Yeah, it helps <laughs> so let's me invent deny responsibility. Let's invent reincarnation yeah. or invent Christianity yeah. or invent Islamic faith yeah. in order to explain why we all have so much pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And depending on what emotions I have will be which one, which one of these teachings I will invent. Yes. None of them are based on, on reality. Some have truth in them, mm -hmm. but none of them are based on the truth. And they're all based on emotional injuries that, that humanity has trying to avoid the consequences of their own choices. Yeah. <laughs> That's the irony of it. it and it's, it's, it's humankind placing a limitation, a terrible, horrible limitation on the experience of a newborn and then blaming God for that limitation. And Without for that, saying that I actually brought this newborn into the world, I must have the primary responsibility of what this newborn is experiencing, including yes. its own pain and suffering. Yeah. 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 And if you can't, and as I've said many times, if you can't see that you're treating your own children badly and your own child is in pain and suffering as a result of your choices, then how are you ever going to take responsibility for anything you've done? Mm. <laughs> it's going to take a long time for you to do so. Yeah. So, you know. And yet, instead, what we find is people want to invent religious teachings, spiritual teachings that try to explain away the suffering and pain instead of actually correct the pain and suffering mm -hmm. by changing their own personal actions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, how crazy is that? And that is an indication of how irresponsible we are mm -hmm. as, we, a, as humanity. We want, we, we want to remain, we want to deny responsibility. Yeah. 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 So the main reason why children, in answer to a question, the main reason why children come to this earth and experience pain and suffering is because the majority of the human race, including our dear sister Catherine, mm -hmm. do not want to take responsibility for their own pain and suffering and for what their pain and suffering generates inside of the children that mm -hmm. are their progeny. They do not want to see themselves as creators of what is happening. Correct. They do not want to see years. themselves as sinners. Yeah. They do not want to see their actions taken out of harmony with love and correct them. Mm -hmm. They want to blame somebody else for them. Yeah. That's why we have the pain and suffering we have on the planet. It's yeah. quite simple. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question. In my seeking, I've come to believe that reincarnation is the simplest explanation for many otherwise unexplainable observations. I cannot agree. <laughs> there are much more simple explanations for every single thing that reincarnation supposedly explains. Reincarnation actually has been developed over many tens of thousands of years as a teaching. And it, it came from very simplistic ideas and concepts about how one person's life force would enter another. When one died, he would enter a person being born and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then it got developed over time, trying to add a whole heap of new concepts to it in order to explain it to, uh, satisfactorily to people. And the new concepts include the spirit world and the fact that we go to a spirit world and those kind of things. And some of the concepts have tried to include God. So what they've tried to do there is make us all God mm -hmm. and, and so forth. And it's become a convolution of erroneous teachings over tens of thousands of years that is such an, like, such a mess of, mm -hmm. and of, of teachings that cause huge amounts of human suffering mm -hmm. and cause huge amounts of spirits to try 
to come back to earth when they no longer need to, mm -hmm. which actually causes a huge amount of suffering to the next generation, that the teachings of reincarnation, I cannot say enough about them being so bad for the humanity, mm -hmm. just like I cannot say enough about the teachings of many other religious mm -hmm. or spiritual concepts being so bad for humanity. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. The main difference between them and divine truth is that, um, or a major difference, is that those other teachings help people to live in their hurt emotions, whereas yes. divine truth confronts all of people's hurt emotions, yes. which is why it's divine truth is still not very popular. <laughs> exactly, because because divine truth requires the individual to take personal responsibility. Yeah, which which if you think about it, God would do. Yes, and and God's truth demands that that you come to understand how your using your own will and whether you're using it responsibly or not mm -hmm. and and taking responsibility for your actions in fact god's truth demands you do take responsibility for your actions even if you don't want to yes <laughs> <laughs> and that's why a lot of people on the planet don't want to listen <laughs> yeah. to it and don't want to practice it yeah. at this stage yeah. but once they start to see the benefits which are yeah. all to do with love and joy and peace and stuff and, and the, and the ending end of, of suffering, suffering yeah. and the end of pain then they will start to realize actually wow we have some wonderful opportunities mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. if we understand these truths mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. pretty awesome mm. okay so i cannot agree with that statement either <laughs> like i say with these emails there are so many statements that are, you know, like you have to discuss every half of a sentence because there's so many statements that are out of harmony <laughs> with truth okay yeah. however i concede that another possible explanation might be that each soul is created with the consciousness of the entire soul family imprinted upon it, which I'm guessing you believe. No. I, and I don't really understand, uh, well, understand you that know, logic either, or the reasoning. She's saying the consciousness of the entire soul family is imprinted upon the each new soul that incarnates onto the planet. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, no, that's definitely not the case. However, the injuries of, are absorbed as soon as the child arrives. So, so you could say in that regard, some of the, uh, the unloving behaviour of the past generations is the, certainly yes. imprinted upon the next generation. generation. But again, that is because of the choice to sin. Of the previous of generation. Of the previous generation. Yeah. And that's not because of any other rule-based or law-based action on God's part. Mm -hmm. So it's all to do with man's choices. Mm -hmm. So, and no, I don't agree with her statements about what I believe because I certainly don't believe those things. <laughs> I think most people are pretty clear about that now. Yeah. Um, but she says that this imprinting of the whole soul, entire soul family upon the consciousness of each soul would account for the huge disparities in knowledge, skills, ability, awareness and talents between people. No, it wouldn't. In fact, which, if, it, if she was logical, that's what every saying, child which, would be born with the same abilities and the same if knowledge. If everyone this, has the same imprint. Exactly. There's no yeah. logic here. No. And this is yeah. what I keep saying too. Yeah. A person who tries to come up with these convoluted reasonings has no logic at all. Mm. The logical statement, what she should be saying is if if there was an imprint, imprinting mm -hmm. of the entire consciousness of the human race of everyone who's ever been yep. upon the next generation, then every person on the next generation would have, have the knowledge of the previous generation. And in fact, in increasing. And yeah, obviously yeah. increasing yeah. knowledge. Yeah. That is obviously not, not true. true. So therefore cannot be the case. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yep. And the way she has been explaining um, the disparities in knowledge, skill, ability, awareness and talents mm -hmm. is um, via either previous incarnations and or previous existence in other realms, which leads to her question to you, yes. which is, <clears throat> how do you explain the huge disparities between knowledge, skills, ability, awareness, talents, etc., of various individuals on this planet? Right. Firstly, her judgment of disparity is very much a judgment. Right. Do you want to explain that a little bit? Well, well, a lot of people in the West believe, and this is a common Western belief, that, that people in other countries don't get it when they do. Mm -hmm. And nothing could be further from the truth. Mm -hmm. right? so, so, you know, so they arrogantly believe that they have some kind of knowledge that other people don't. They have some kind of awareness that other people don't, this kind of thing. Yep. Yes. Yep. It's an arrogance, mm -hmm. again, lack of humility. It's not true. Mm -hmm. and, and nothing could be further from the truth, mm -hmm. in fact. 
So, so, you know, straight away. And it's also out of harmony of love to believe in such a thing mm -hmm. <laughs> besides anything else. Mm -hmm. And it's also out of harmony with humility or anything else uh, that that is connected with God to believe such a thing. Mm -hmm. So no, I can't I can't agree with that statement. And also, I I suspect she's also talking about child prodigies and you know I understand the, what she's talking call, about. Um, but there are many more simple uh, explanations for all of those. Yes. Things. So give us your <coughs> explanations. Well, for example, child prodigies. Most of the time, a child is just overcloaked by a spirit because of the addictions of its parent mm -hmm. and the sin of its parent, overcloaked by a, a spirit. Who's, who's previously, who's had, previously an for had an aptitude for a particular thing. Let's yeah. call it music or yeah. art or whatever. Yeah. And so the child starts expressing that spirit's, that uh, spirit's skills. skill and Australia. ability. Yeah. Quite simple. Yeah. Right? And this happens all the time. Mm -hmm. And it certainly does happen all the time. Mm -hmm. Children are also more connected to spirits, people who have lived in the past who are now in the spirit realm, than adults. Mm -hmm. So they are more open to having this occur to them. Yeah. And they often get shut down as they progress in their life, unless the so-called prodigy is accepted by the parents and then the parents don't shut it down. Yeah. So let's say the child is speaking to other children, uh -huh. then that's shut down because, uh, you know, that... Oh, it's speaking to a child spirit. Spirits. Yes. Yeah. So the child is speaking to child spirits who the parent cannot see. Yeah. The parent feels really challenged by that. Yeah. So the parent shuts that down, yes. projects to the child, oh, you're just being a bit crazy now. It's just a make-believe friend, mm -hmm. isn't it? And rah, mm -hmm. rah, rah. Mm -hmm. So they shut all that down, right? Mm -hmm. But when the child has a nice gift of playing the violin, yeah. they just pick up a violin and starts playing it. Yeah. They go, oh, isn't that wonderful? That's yeah. amazing. And they, they, what do they do? They develop that. They yes. explore they that. They even that. exploit they, it. Yes. Right? Through their own addictions. Through their own addictions. Yep. And, and of course, the child feels approved of, and mm -hmm. so naturally the child's allowed to have that connection. Yes. Right? So, of yep. course, the child's going to have a disparity compared to other children mm -hmm. because of the parent's emotional condition <laughs> yes. and what the parent and the parent's addictions dictate. Because also there's another aspect to it, isn't it, that doesn't involve spirits, which is just um, depending on a parent's uh, emotional openness to learning, their fears about learning, that whatever Not it is. Not only that, their emotional openness to gender, sexuality, to yep. uh, everything. Their emotional openness Self -esteem, to everything. Self-esteem, whatever it is. All of Blocks that. Blocks in... or enables the child to learn. To learn. So some children seem to learn math so easily while others struggle. Yep. Some seem to struggle with learning globally while others do well in a lot of things. And you can see why. The more fear the child's in, the yes. more difficult it's, going to, the difficulty it's going to have understanding things. The worse and it feels about itself, the comprehension, even intellectually, will be yep. impaired. And this is why countries have, that have lower education mm -hmm. have, and have higher learning difficulties have it. Because the countries that have more education are generally oppressors mm -hmm. who, who cause fear-based interactions to occur to these other countries. Yeah. These, the, the general countries are in fear mm -hmm. of their lives in many cases. And as a result of the fear, it suppresses their ability to learn. Yeah. So it's quite simple. Yeah. If we became loving, no one would have a suppressed ability to learn. Everyone Absolutely. would be able to be capable of learning as rapidly as they possibly can. And exactly. And having lived in refugee, a refugee population, I mean, life is chaotic. The future doesn't look bright. You go to school. There's what, so much negativity. There's so much negativity. Um, Everyone's carrying around a gun when they're only in their teens. Learning how to assemble and disassemble them before they hit before their teens. Before they're five. Yes. So they, they're certainly there's all of those emotional, uh, the, in the emotional environment has mm. such an impact upon the learning and the skills and the aptitude. And I put to Catherine, who made those guns? Who created that environment? Mm -hmm. It not it the countries who do not want, want to take refugees? Isn't it the mm -hmm. And America is one of the worst offenders mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And isn't it the countries who make armaments? And mm -hmm. America is one of the worst offenders there mm -hmm. that cause this level of fear to be mm -hmm. present in these particular places that also causes the suppression of learning. Mm. So, so this is where I feel, yeah, here's a person coming up with the reincarnation of all things mm -hmm. as an explanation for something where she doesn't want to come to terms with the fact that she personally participates in the lack of learning of these children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is where we don't take personal responsibility for our actions. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I think we've answered that question. We have answered it very well. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> Even if we do say so ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I think in terms of our point, it yes. was made. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> if <laughs> There's been plenty, by the way, 
there's been plenty of human and society, so, social and scientific studies that prove that the more pressure you put on a child when it's young and the more fear yeah. the child is in when it's young, the more yeah. difficulty it has learning and the more difficulty it has for the rest of its life. Absolutely. And, and, and if you put that pressure up before the child is seven years of age, uh, then it, it's devastating to their life. Yes. To their development, their brain development, to yes. their motor development, to their yeah. sensory development. And then if you do the additional thing of taking away their food, yeah. which, which Western countries do yeah. from other yeah. countries, you take away their food, their resources and, and most of their living, their method of living, mm -hmm. then of course these children are going to struggle. Mm -hmm. Of course. And if they're starving to death, of course their brain is not going to function properly. No. And if they don't have enough water to clean water to drink, of course they're going to have problems. Yeah. So don't blame reincarnation or, <laughs> or divine truth teachings for it. It again is caused by humanity's unloving condition. Yeah. Man, humanity's yeah. desire to continue acting out of harmony with love and not recognising where they are out of harmony yeah. with love. Yeah. And even within a Western society, you see these anomalies between aptitudes in children. Partly there's personality issues going on where children are more drawn to something because of something within but themselves. But even a lot of that is based but, on addictions of their parents. Exactly. And the openness or closeness within parents towards, towards a child a pursuing thing. something or... Yeah. Even so, um, if mum's scared of a mathematician, do you think her son's going to be drawn to it? Mm. You know, if he wants mum's approval, probably yeah. not. Yeah, he's going to yeah. freak her out every yeah. time he's drawn to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so if he desperately wants his mother's approval, he's either going to want to become a mathematician. Of course not. He'll suppress that. He'll that suppress that interest desire. Within yeah. himself. He'll suppress yeah. music. He'll express he'll suppress art. If dad doesn't want him to do it, he'll become a footy player when he really wants to be a basketball player. Yeah. He, he, you know, there's all sorts of things he will do in yeah. order to conform to the parents' demands of the child, to, to what the mm -hmm. parent believes is right. And remember, we've already raised with Catherine, she herself, through her own omission in this email, is demonstrating that she would push her children into a in certain, certain direction. Directions. Yeah, and, that and, she thought was best. And these, this injury yeah. of parents mm -hmm. is a major problem for learning for the children. Yes. And later on in this email, she makes the point, which is very true, that without love, human beings do not thrive. They do not. I agree. But the, so, the big problem here is that Catherine herself has no understanding of love. Mm -hmm. And so she thinks what she believes love to be is, is love. love. And that is the problem. Yeah. That is the problem. It's the things we do that we believe are right, mm -hmm. that are actually from God's perspective wrong, wrong, that we have the biggest problems with. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Next question. If God's laws are constant, which I do believe, and if reincarnation is not the norm for humans here on earth, about which I'm sceptical but open. <laughs> no, <I> can... <laughs> you're not open, but go on. <laughs> I come to my third question. Yes. How, it is, how is it that you and the 14 have done so? We are, after all, equally special, are we not? Well, firstly, she's attributing reincarnation to a feeling of being special. Yeah. And I can't agree that such a thing is true. She's now also saying that when I talk about reincarnation of the 14, that I'm talking about reincarnation in the same way that she's talking about mm -hmm. reincarnation. Mm -hmm. And that is also not true. Mm -hmm. What I'm talking about is a return to Earth that's cap that you're capable of achieving once you reach the union state or the mm -hmm. union condition. And everyone is capable of Everyone's doing Everyone's capable that. of doing that. So therefore, everyone is capable of returning to an Earth. I would suggest that the majority would probably not choose it after they've seen what the first 14 have had to go through. <laughs> um, but God's laws are constant in God's this respect. God's laws are constant in this yeah. respect yeah. and do not and are unchangeable. It applies to everyone. It just so happens with every form of discovery that there are always people who discover it first. Mm -hmm. And just like there was the first person who discovered how to fly, the first person who discovered penicillin, the first person who discovers anything obviously has gone through a whole lot of things to discover that particular thing. Yeah. And some of those things are even mistaken or, or fortunate circumstances or happenstance, you could call it. That is the reason why they've discovered those yeah. things. That does not make them more special in God's eyes. Yeah. That is their choice, how they've used their will. Mm -hmm. And the 14 have used their will to return to earth once they understood how to do it. That's all that's happened here. Mm. Nothing more. Mm. They are no more special than any other person. 
and they are no more loved by, well, you know, they've received more of God's love, but from God's perspective, God loves them as much as God loves the person in the hells, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. God just doesn't have the ability to transmit that love to the person in the hells as much because the person in the hells blocks the flow of that love. So there is no specialness in the 14 in comparison to the others. Mm -hmm. That's not what's happening here. What's happening here is that seven soul mate couples found a way to return to earth and as an experiment they chose to do it. Mm -hmm. That's all that's happening. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know what the outcome would be and still do not know what the outcome will be. And certainly it's not my experience that I feel somehow, as you mentioned, special or better or or that I am in any way superior to no. anyone else. No, and the reality is we're not. No. There will be, obviously, the closer we get to our original condition, the more we'll remember mm-hmm. and the more we'll be able to share, which may look special to other people, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, they can discover exactly the same things that we have discovered. We have just been fortunate enough to be the first ones who have discovered it. That's mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. That's the only difference. Yeah between ourselves and anyone else. And and that's like, and I f- personally firmly believe that. Mm-hmm. So, so because I know God and mm-hmm. I know God's nature and I know how much God loves all of God's children. Yeah. And I know how much God wants all of God's children to have the same relationship. Yeah. And so, you know, at the end of the day, I know for certain that the 14 who have come back, seven soul pairs that have come back, have not got into the condition they have got into because they were somehow favoured by God or have some kind of special role. Mm-mm. They chose the role mm-hmm. through the expression of their loving will. Mm-hmm. That's what they've done. Yeah. And every person has the ability yeah. to choose such a thing. And really as a desire just to help people learn this, these lessons. Of course, it's motivated yeah. by love. Yeah. Of course, it wouldn't, it's not motivated by some self-aggrandizement or some other, you know, superior-based emotion. It's based on, I want, I want people to know what I know. Mm. I want people to be yeah. able to, yeah. cha- I want people to know if they choose to know. If they choose to know. I don't want to force it on it. That's why we don't do marketing and we don't do monetization of our YouTube channel yeah, and all yeah. the other things that everybody else does yeah. because we're not trying to force it on anyone. It has to be engaging their desire which yeah. is exactly the way God works. Mm-hmm. Right? And the way we've chosen to do it is we must demonstrate our own humility. We, we are exposing ourselves in an injured state and demonstrating Correct. a humble process. And the injured state was unavoidable yeah. because, because we're coming to an injured world. Yeah. So getting injured again was unavoidable. Mm-hmm. So we could have just materialised We could have materialised. But we, but we wouldn't have accomplished the same thing. I feel also it has a far less power to tell someone about a process compared to demonstrating a process. Of course. It's like me teaching you how to boil pasta verbally or I could just go and do it in the kitchen. And show you. You, you, yeah. you learn And that's so what much. we're doing. Yeah. We're, that's what we're attempting to do here. Mm. And, and we may not be successful. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's no guarantee of success yeah. because humankind has their will, mm-hmm. right? They, they can choose to listen or not listen. Yeah. We love that. Yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> we I think it's that. wonderful. Yeah. But, but don't expect us to engage in argumentation all the time <laughs> yeah. just because you want to. <laughs> you know, we're going to keep doing what we feel is the best thing to do to share divine truth on the planet. And, and whether people accept that or reject it is up to them. Mm-hmm. There's no investment here in that. Mm. Right? Yeah. If we have to go out to work to do it, then we'll go out to work to do it. If people want to continue donating enough funds for us to continue doing it, then we'll, then mm-hmm. we'll do it that way. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's going to be easier. We'll have more time to do it if we don't have to go out to work to do it. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, if that's what needs to be done, that's what we'll do. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to continue doing what we know to be right until such a point in time as we can't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and we are not guaranteed of the outcome. We, do, we are not guaranteed of perfection. We are not guaranteed to get back the same condition that we had when we, before we came here. We, you know, there's a lot of damage that is experienced coming back to earth. Mm. And we, are going, we have to go through the emotional experience of it, as you well know. Yeah. And, and, you know, our choice to do so was driven by love for people um, on the planet 
to share the truth with them. And, and that's the only reason why it, why it occurred. It was nothing to do with God thinking we're special mm -hmm. and he'll send a bunch of seven special couples, you know, yeah, 14 yeah. people back to earth to treat the earth like they're special mm -hmm. and for the earth to treat them like they're special. It's not like mm -hmm. that at all. In fact, it, yes. And in fact, this particular question demonstrates the injuries of Catherine mm. in that she does want to be special. Mm. She does want to have a special role, a special place. She yeah. does want God to treat her special, yeah. as if she's special, yeah. uh, in, in superiority to others. Yeah. She wants her to be more special <laughs> than somebody else. Yeah, and views the reincarnated state as more, more special. special. And it's not. No. It's not more special. In fact, yeah. it's a very, very difficult yeah. state. And, and that's why I suggest that the majority of people who get to the state where they can return probably won't mm. because there's no need to mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. Once the divine truth has been shared on the planet, there is no other point of coming here. Yeah, yeah. Really, there's no other point. No. People, it's been shared again. People have the choice if, if it's shared Mind worldwide. You, if, if people make the choice to embrace their will and learn in harmony with love and learn the lessons of divine truth, for a soul then who wish to return onto an earth with that set of conditions, it would be far less painful than it Of course it, has it would been. be, but also there'd be less point to doing exactly. it. Exactly. Because yeah. love would no longer be the motivator, motivator to help yeah. anybody else get out of the condition. Yeah. So, I, you know, I feel that probably the main reason why anybody after that would want to possibly reincarnate is because they never had the first experience on earth because mm. it was terminated by an abortion or, or a miscarriage. Yeah. And um, that's probably the only the reason, only reason why, why somebody would come back again um, after they've gone through the process of getting becoming at one with God and at one with their soulmate. Yeah. So, yeah, so, you know, I don't see it as a special condition. Obviously, um, you know, the more developed we become the and the more we remember, the more wonder people will feel about what is known. Mm -hmm. But that's not because we're special. It's just because we've learnt a whole thing, a whole heap of things from God over two thousand years that anybody else can learn. Yeah. So even that's not special. It's just, just that we've engaged the process of learning more than anyone else has. That's all. Yeah. yeah. And the way that we did it was by not holding on to our personal opinions, yeah. <laughs> and not not and and having a truly open heart by receiving God's love first. Yeah. Above all other things. Yeah. That's how it was achieved. So it wasn't certainly achieved by our own effort, aside from our desire to recognize our own sin and deal with it, and then our desire after that to to continue to engage passion and desire for God mm -hmm. and, and for God's love. Mm. Mm. Okay, ready and to continue. My personal feeling is anybody who wants to love is quite special. Yeah, I agree. Anybody who, particularly anybody who wants to love and learn the truth about love in an environment such as this earth yeah where where everything is aimed towards you you know addic towards addictions only mm -hmm. and not love uh, to learn about love in this environment makes you quite a unique and special person yeah. actually yeah. but that is not made by god that's because you've made the choice yeah not because god has yeah exactly mm. yeah Okay, we keep going. Yes, so I think we're up to our last question, aren't we? Um, nearly. <laughs> <laughs> nearly. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, there's a, just a brief tag on. Well, let's have a look at the, the tag on because there's bound to be a few. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also wonder why a loving God would give some new souls with Somalia as a birthplace and others with Beverly Hills. Seems rather harsh in both cases, really. God did not gift them either place. God, the people on earth, Gift, gifted them, if yeah. that could be stated. And yeah. it's not certainly not a gift. It's a terrible, terrible yeah. ta action taken because the people on earth have chosen mm -hmm. to live out of harmony with God's laws and principles and chosen to sin. Yeah. So, and so, and yeah. God, when God created the regions of Somalia and Beverly Hills, they, they weren't were terrible. Yeah. The whole yeah. earth was beautiful. Yeah. So, so, you know, the whole of the earth was a beautiful environment for which the newly born soul could could develop and and grow mm -hmm. and uh, and earth has only become different to that through the actions of people yeah through the free will choices to act out of harmony with love and to purposefully sin mm -hmm. 
that has been the cause of people arriving in Somalia and Beverly Hills and any <laughs> place in between. And I don't feel there are any places on earth at this point in time that are a very satisfactory place to, to arrive. Yeah. There, there are different problems for different people. We're arriving in different places. Mm -hmm. The people who arrive in the USA have a lot of arrogance and other emotions to address. Mm -hmm. People in Somalia have a lot of different emotions to address, particularly emotions towards women that are very bad and so forth. Yeah. And, and have you know all sorts of issues with regard to fear to address. Mm -hmm. Every location has specific emotions to address. Yeah. There are some locations on this planet that are more oppressive of other locations and every country of the Western world fits into that to category. That category. Yeah. And they are more oppressive to, than other locations from a spiritual perspective. Mm -hmm. And they also result in many passing who are passing in a darker condition than from, from other countries yeah. as a result. And all of that is the result, again, of mankind and individual choices, collective and individual choices, to live out of harmony with love and to sin. Yeah. Mm. All right, next, on to soulmates. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> As most of creation is male and female, it seems possible that soul pairs might exist. <laughs> Again, can I say that if you received any of God's love whatsoever, you would no longer think it to be a possibility, but you would think it to be a reality. Mm -hmm. so, so this is an indication that she's yet to receive God's love. And also soul pairs are not necessarily of opposite gender to each other. Correct. However, if no one should ever mate with anyone outside of their own original soul pair, and if most people do not meet their soulmate until they are in the fifth or sixth sphere, and if Earth is our first stop, then you are teaching that virtually no human being should mate even for affection, companionship, and or to procreate. Wow, that is a very long stretch of the bow to, to yes. make a whole heap of assumptions that, of things that I'm not actually teaching. And then, yes. and then at the end to say that I'm actually teaching something that's completely untrue. Yeah. So <laughs> um, you want to deconstruct it part by part? Yeah, well, yeah. maybe we should just say that, say, state the state truth. State the truth. The yeah. truth is that God, if, if everyone on earth was in a state of acceptance of God's laws and principles, and every parent in particular had dealt with their emotional injuries towards the opposite gender. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Catherine, you have a lot of emotional injuries towards men to address here. And mm -hmm. um, every single person would, by the age of seven years of age, have attracted their soulmate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they wouldn't even be able to yet have a developed sexual relationship with them by the mm -hmm. time they've attracted their soulmate. Mm -hmm. right? Because usually development occurs in their teenage years sexually. But they would have already met their soulmate, they'd already get along with their soulmate, they'd already love their soulmate, they'd already enjoy a relationship with their soulmate, even though it might not be sexual, mm -hmm. by the time they're seven years of age. So, <laughs> exactly. And so, that's how God created it to be. Yeah. What has man done? Man has created huge amounts of injuries associated with the intergender emotional injuries. Mm -hmm. So men have injuries towards themselves and women. Mm -hmm. Women have injuries towards themselves and men. and men. And as a result of these particular injuries, there is a, there is a rejection of the other gender mm -hmm. and a rejection of self. Mm -hmm. And as a result of these kinds of rejections, most people on this earth find it impossible to recognize their soulmate when they do meet them. However, even with the extent of these injuries, the majority of people on earth do meet their soulmate, even though they do not recognize them at the time of meeting. And that's the important distinction, isn't it? That that's how strong we, the attraction is. We, yes, there's such a strong attraction between soul halves. It's very unlikely that you won't at least cross paths while on earth. Very unlikely. Some However, unfortunate event would have had to have occurred, like yes, the death, death of one or the other. Yeah. Or, or the incapacity of one or the other. Or the, you know, restriction of one by... Uh, by the environment. By the somehow, environment somehow. For them not to meet. However, it's only when we have worked through certain emotional inju injuries, which typically in the spirit world we would deal with in the fifth sphere or around that well, as stage. as we discussed yesterday, I think it was, in our previous thing about sexual projection. Yeah. And um, we said quite clearly that the reason why the majority of people leave it till then is because they are so resistive to addressing the emotional injuries with themselves, how they treat themselves, and with the opposite gender. 
especially regarding the sexual attraction, which is which is th- such a core part of the soulmate of the soulmate attraction. And that's why the majority of people don't deal with it to yeah. the fifth sphere. Because it's not it's not because of what God created. No. Again, it's because of what human have humans have created in their sin yeah. that has caused this condition to yeah. exist. Yeah. So stop attributing to me <laughs> teachings that are unloving when the reality is humankind is choosing to be unloving to mm-hmm. each other and then only getting the results of such a choice. Yes. Which is right. Yes, it, it's right to have that result. Yes, and while and we won't recognise our soulmate until we work through those issues, but we may st- and are likely to still meet them. Yes. That's a one point of clarification. Well, you know yourself that you met me even when you I was had not. No yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had some kind of w- just a injured, slight awareness, <laughs> injured desire to meet you. Yeah. but um, I certainly wasn't in the fifth sphere. <laughs> no, I was in the hells. Most most people who meet their soulmates, while one or both of them are in the hells, yeah, that's the reality of yeah. this earth's condition. Yeah. And yet, because they don't recognise each other, they go on to have other relationships. Yes, and but it, it's also saying, now she's saying that you, we shouldn't even get together with anyone because it... Of course you shouldn't. You just damage people. Exactly. <laughs> and the point I'm getting to is that... That's not going to stop exercise, you from doing it in the injury. Yes, but you can exercise your will to say, I want to deal with these injuries and I want to be with my soulmate, and only my soulmate. And it's highly That's likely within a control. few years of making that decision, yep. you will meet your soulmate. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The majority of people don't make that decision. Mm-hmm. The majority of people are quite frightened of meeting their soulmate. Mm-hmm. And the majority of people, when they meet their soulmate, are quite challenged. Yep. And as a result, don't like them yep. and reject them. And there's all sorts of other human-based sinful conditions that cause people to reject their own soulmates. Yeah, yeah. God's created a system where you meet your soulmate. Yeah. You've created a system where you reject your soulmate. Yeah. And I suggest to you, Catherine, you are rejecting your soulmate intensely at this moment mm-hmm. because of the next few statements you make are proof of such <laughs> <Okay>. rejections. <laughs> let's, let's go on then. Do you believe that most of us should be on our own as I am now, as most saints are? <laughs> wow. Is that saying, is she trying to say she's a saint or is she being funny or is... Well, there's the implication, isn't there, that she's basically suggesting that people... She's basically suggesting that historically people who have lived alone have become saints and therefore come special in some way and that that means from God's perspective that they were good. No, it does not. Just because a human is named a saint by other humans, it does not have any bearing whatsoever on how God sees them. Yeah. Right? So, so don't assume that because all the so-called saints or the majority of them lived alone, that that means that they were better in any way. I would way. say that indicated that they were quite blocked to their soulmates. And they were quite injured with yep. regard to their sexual, sexuality. sexuality and their soulmate part of their life, which is a significant part of your injuries. Such a right? part of our identity. This it's a huge part of our identity, so it's a significant yeah. injury. Yeah. And the reason why many so-called saints became saints is because they... they put so much of their effort into development of their life in other areas other than the relationship because they were already injured in relationships, emotionally injured. They put so much of their effort in other areas that they became recognised. That's the only reason why they became such. So, so, so no, I don't agree that you have to be alone. Okay. However, the majority of us need to be <laughs> until we work through our emotional issues. So that we don't damage anyone else. No, we need to get mean? to the state where we work through our injuries that cause us to be alone first. I see. Once we've done that, we'll attract a, a partner probably, mm-hmm. potentially our soulmate, and then we'll have to work through a whole bunch more <laughs> of injuries before we actually can actually join with them and actually love them. <laughs> So true. And and then we'll have the capacity of actually enjoying our soulmate. But all of that exists not because of God's creation, yeah. but because of humans' creation. Exactly. All of it exists because humans have cho- chosen this yeah. over centuries and millennia. Yeah. You look at how men treat women, women treat men. It's terrible on this planet, even to this day. Yeah. How you yourself, Catherine, treat men is terrible, mm-hmm. even to this day. Yeah. That's yeah. why you haven't met your soulmate. Yeah. Okay, so let me pin you down. She says directly. Yes. Are you teaching that only the lucky few <laughs> who manage to find their soulmates should have a partner while here on earth? Are you saying that? 
I am saying quite definitively uh -huh. that the way God created this entire universe was that the soulmate relationship is the only relationship we can have with another person sexually without sinning. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that all of us cannot get in the condition of being without sin. I'm okay. saying that all of us actually have the potential to quite rapidly get into the condition of being without sin. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm also saying. Beautiful. So, Now, the fact that people don't accept that is up to them. Well, she goes on to say, almost in response to that statement, <laughs> that's asking a, an awful lot of a fresh so a spirit soul at their first stop, don't you think? No, it's not. It's not asking an awful lot of them. It's asking an awful lot of their parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and is it an awful lot? No, it's not an awful lot. No. All I'm asking is the average parent, instead of being so selfish and self-absorbed, mm -hmm. learns how to love yeah. from God's perspective. Yeah. And if the parent did that, the child would arrive in a beautiful, pristine condition. And by the time the child was seven years of age, developed intellectually, he would have already or she would have already met his or her soulmate. Mm -hmm. And isn't that a wonderful system? Yes. And if you don't think that's worth working through your injuries as a parent to obtain that for the next generation, then I suggest to you you're very selfish about your injuries. Mm -hmm. And I suggest to you that you're either scared of emotion and you're scared of sadness and you're scared or you're afraid of having to address all of your emotions or you just don't want to. Yeah. And either one needs to be addressed. Yeah. If you really want to give the gift to the next generation of happiness, then you learn to be happy. <laughs> and the only way you're going to learn to be happy is by getting rid of your sin. Yeah. You're becoming aware of it and addressing it and dealing with it. Mm -hmm. And God will help you through that entire process. God's got the repentance and forgiveness process to help you through that in a very rapid way if you choose very, to engage And it. all of God's laws are operating to help bring us towards this truth. It's yeah. just the issue of arrogance essentially arrogance keeping people away from addictions this. yeah honestly the addictions are intense here you yeah. know the the addictions for relationship even are intense yeah and and they are not based on love at all and and if 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 everyone followed what i was saying mm -hmm. within one generation every single person would meet their soulmate mm -hmm. within by the time they were seven years of age mm -hmm. by the time they got to be sexually developed they would already probably be having children. Yep. Right? They, those children would already be free of any emotional injuries yep. and therefore free to develop and learn about the use of their will. And those children would meet their soulmates by the age of seven right? and, and experience the same happiness as the previous generation experienced. That's mm -hmm. what would happen. Mm -hmm. And that would happen generation upon generation. Each of these experiencing the personality and nature of the individual, experiencing their desires and passions in all the areas in harmony with love. There would be no war on this planet. There would be no suffering on this planet. There'll be no pain on this planet. There'll be no disease on this planet. There'd be no sickness on the planet. There'd be no injuries. There'd be no genetic malformations. There'd be nothing mm -hmm. that caused any pain anymore on this mm -hmm. planet if everybody did what I suggest. Mm -hmm. And if you don't think that's worth mm -hmm doing what you need to do to make that happen, then I suggest to you that nothing's going to motivate you to do it. Mm. And if you don't believe, and if you believe that it's awful and an awful requirement, then I suggest that you are way out of harmony with God's perception of love if you believe such a thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. It's a wonderful requirement. It is. <laughs> with it a is. wonderful result. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right. Um, Catherine says, I mean, humans need each other. We are designed to couple, literally. I agree. <laughs> but not to couple with everyone and sundry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're designed to couple with our soulmate. Yeah. <laughs> also, as a plan expectation, it seems to be a miserable failure, which again would be the fault of the creator, not the created. No. Right? Oh, well, see, this is where I still don't get her reasoning. It's like, she still doesn't understand, and my Jew, we haven't had. She hasn't listened to the conversation. <laughs> no, up to that. She, <laughs> so she hasn't enough. heard. But she, but she doesn't understand that just because that something is a failure, it didn't mean that God created it to be such, no. or that God created it as a failure. God created a perfect system. It's still a perfect system. Well, there's a redemptive plan always in place. 
it's not only that, it's constantly. still a perfect system because all the pain and suffering is the result of it being a perfect system. Yeah. Is a result of the fact that we choose to do things out of harmony of love and we receive the painful consequences of making such a choice yeah. as a feedback mechanism to tell us that we're making choices right now, right this minute. We're making choices that are out of harmony with love. Yeah. Catherine, right now, making choices out of harmony with love. Mm -hmm. Pain and suffering result. You're, you're not with your soulmate as a result. Mm -hmm. Pain and suffering is a result of you making choices out of harmony of love right now. Mm. And and you can change it. That's what I'm saying. You can change it. It's got nothing to do with some reincarnation thing from, from 50 generations ago that you chose to do then that you're now paying for. Nothing to do with that. Mm. You can change it this instant. Mm -hmm. That is loving. Mm -hmm. It's loving to understand that you can change unloving behavior now, today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not have uh, to pay for unloving behavior for the next 50 times you visit the earth. Yeah. Uh, as reincarnation would suggest. Yeah. Yeah. Terribly unloving teaching. Yeah. Mm. All human beings, wherever they are born, whenever they are born, whatever the conditions or color of their skin, thrive when loved. I agree completely. And wither and die to the degree which they are not loved. I agree completely. But, what? but whose definition of love here? Yeah. The trouble is for you, Catherine, is that you're, you're imposing your definition of love, which is severely flawed on God's system. Mm. And while you do that, you'll be searching for the rest of your living days and your life in the spirit world. You'll continue to search for teachings that explain your belief instead of giving up your belief and accepting God's teachings of love. What horrible God would cast her, she corrects herself, his, Likely, Mother God would never do this. Yeah, he is the injury. Brand new bright spirits <coughs> to this place of darkness where they will surely feel lost and ab abandoned. Yeah. Now, you know, I think we've discussed the reincarnation aspect of now let's look at the emotion. Yeah. Here, here is demonstrating Catherine's real condition of love towards men. Yep. Like males and her don't get along. <laughs> And well, she's she got believes that women are superior. She believes that women are superior. That they know more about love. Yes. That and they, that no mother they are, would do. That would never like cause suffering. Like I've seen suffering. mothers do the most horrific things to their children. So, you know, none of this is true. Yeah. And, and also, it, it, again, it's her, her desire to believe that she, as a woman, is superior to a male. Mm -hmm. and, and this is one of the reasons why she has not met her soulmate mm -hmm. at this point. And she says, you know, what God would do this, where these children would likely, would surely feel lost and abandoned. And my feelings are that, Catherine, deep inside of yourself, in a place that you're not willing to go, you feel very lost, lost and, and abandoned. Lost and abandoned, yeah. And yeah. this is what's actually driving the of entirety this. of this email. Yes. Your desire to avoid those feelings. And her desire to believe in reincarnation is driven by the same feelings. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And the reality is that God doesn't hasn't forced anyone to come here. God God created a system by which we people on earth attract people to come here. Mm. And due to due to our desire to have children and then that desire because it's not purely and and lovingly expressed and because we want to hold on to all of our own unloving belief systems and unloving emotions just as Catherine is here doing. Yes. Right? The child gets damaged. And then to blame God for such damage is blasphemy. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's all I can say to that statement. Yeah. You just blasphemed God, Catherine, mm -hmm. in making these statements. You do. And, and by blaspheming God, you demonstrate that you're not actually ever even close to God at this point. And, and my suggestion is at least have a think about what I'm saying to you. If you were at least close to God, you would never choose to even believe such a thing of God, let alone, let alone to believe that I'm t and to believe that I'm teaching such a thing. If I had any connection with God at all, and by the way, if my teachings are so nice for you, <laughs> then I suggest, and yet you've got so many strong aversions to them, then then I suggest to you that that maybe you don't actually believe that my teachings are very good at all. Well, and perhaps I could read the last little paragraph that exactly. she sent to you. She says, so I love your teachings, AJ, but some of them do not make logical sense. Yes, and I, all of my teachings make logical sense. Definitely. All of them are based upon love. None of your teachings, Catherine, 
are based on logic or love. Mm -hmm. And and I think we've tried to demonstrate in this feedback how that's how the case. That's case. It is my experience that God is always loving, always merciful and far gentler than I could ever be. Some of your key teachings are not. I disagree. Some of her, Catherine's key beliefs are not. Yes, and I, I find that to be a That's statement based in ignorance of what you're teaching, actually. Well, because... it's total ignorance of what I'm teaching, yeah. but it's also total ignorance of God, God's laws, God's love, God's feelings. Mm -hmm. And she says she experiences God to be a merciful and loving God, while at the same time beforehand demonstrating that she herself doesn't, doesn't. demonstrate mercy to others, and in particular has no mercy to feeling, merciful feelings towards men at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. She says, thank you again for your dedication to truth and love. My pleasure. I know it's a hard feedback, Catherine, but that's the way it is. Uh, much love to you and yours. Mary is a darling, you lucky man. Yeah, another statement there. It's amazing how many times we get this kind of statement. Man. No one ever says, like, oh. No one ever says, no one ever Mary, emails you're a Mary lucky and says, woman. you're such a lucky woman. And being, I am a lucky that. woman. Well, I feel you very know, lucky. we both feel we're lucky. But, yeah. but the reality is no one ever emails me saying that about, you know. It's, it you emails saying me that about saying that about you. Me. Yeah, yeah. But almost every woman who emails me says this. Yeah. Right. Why is that? Because they personally have an emotional injury to, to men. Towards men. Towards men. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and throughout this entire email, Catherine is demonstrating her emotional injuries towards men, yeah. which are very significant, actually. Yeah, they are. And I feel sorry for any son that she might have had mm. as a result of these particular injuries. Quite harsh emotions. Very harsh men. emotions towards men. And quite, um, she feels, she doesn't even feel that there's any sin in her very harsh emotions. None at all. She believes herself to be men. right. And mm. that. That, as you've mentioned a few times during this discussion, it's the sins that we believe are righteous that end up causing us so much uh, problem, damage, and pain and damage suffering. other people. And we a huge amount ourselves. of pain and suffering in our lives towards we ourselves and others. Distance ourselves from God by continually justifying them. There's a yes. lot of issues. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so I feel the beauty of having this discussion, though, with you, Catherine, is that hopefully if you've been open enough and capable enough of having enough humility to listen the whole way through without getting very, very upset, yeah. which I suggest, I suspect you've not been able to do. <laughs> so that's um, why there's a video so you can come back to so it. So you can come back to it. Yeah. Our intention here is not to slam you or anything like that, but our intention, we, what, as we said initially, we receive so many emails like this. We receive so many emails where people impose their illogical, unreasonable, unloving, false beliefs mm -hmm. upon the teachings that I'm trying to teach. Mm -hmm. And the teachings have nothing to do with any of your emotions here. Mm. And, and once you understand the truth of what I'm trying to teach, you'll realise how far how how much it is different to anything you have ever learnt before. Mm. And and what you say you've learnt and what you say are the similarities between my teachings and and what you believe are not at all. Mm. There's no there's no similarities at all between them. And I feel it's very, very important that you see that. Mm. And and also you're making many presumptions which are completely unfounded. And on top of that, projecting towards me as a male that mm -hmm. I am lesser than a female. Mm -hmm. And 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 your questions have been argumentative mm -hmm. on top of that yes. and not inquisitive. <laughs> <laughs> and really and in why, some places telling you that, telling you off. Really. Telling me off, yeah. yeah. Telling me yeah. off, telling me I'm wrong, whatever, yeah. whatever. And, and that's not an inquisitive desire to know truth which is one of the main reasons why, Catherine, you are struggling to understand God's truth. What I suggest to you is open your heart to God's love. You're going to have to open your heart to the male side of God here and to receive some of God's love because you are so blocked to men. And as a result of that, that is going to soften your heart towards men in particular and soften your heart towards God and you'll begin to understand some of God's principles of laws mm. and you'll begin to understand some of these things that we've been teaching and then and only then will you understand why the teachings of reincarnation are so disastrously bad for humanity and for your own life. Yeah. And in fact, you emotionally 
are using the teachings of reincarnation to avoid your own personal emotional pain mm. from your childhood. Yeah. And this is a way that you have distanced yourself and gotten into a state of denial about your personal emotional pain. And much of your personal relation, emotional pain does relate to men. Mm. So that is an area of investigation that you need to examine if you're ever going to become anywhere close to God and also, ironically, anywhere able, close to able, to share God's truth with others. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, so maybe that's a time we can leave it here. I think <laughs> yeah. we've covered most of what we wanted to cover there with yeah. that discussion. As I've said uh, in, the pre in the discussion, we will discuss in a lot more details the principles of incarnation, reincarnation, and God's love and the mm -hmm. use of will and all these other factors in other, in other FAQ sessions. But we felt that because of the amount of emails that we get like this from all sorts of different religious faiths, including mm -hmm. New Age faiths, mm -hmm. um, we felt that it was necessary to raise some of the issues and to, in particular to demonstrate the relationship between the unhealed, hurt emotional condition yeah. and the acceptance of false beliefs about mm -hmm. God, false beliefs about even what I'm teaching, mm -hmm. and false beliefs about humanity, and also to not take responsibility yes, for I, our own pain and suffering in yeah, our lives. I feel that's the other major theme in yeah. our discussion today is just the, the desire to avoid the responsibility of, that we have in using our free yeah. will and yeah. and the fact that that is a gift from God to assist us to learn about love, to learn about hate, as you said. Mm. And while we continually deny that the effects of our unloving use of will has anything to do with us and everything to do with God, we're really failing in that lesson yeah. and we're, it's not, a, it's we're going basic, to continue suffering as a result. It's a basic lesson. Yeah. We need to become, have an awakening to our own sin. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I suggest to you, Catherine, please begin to have an awakening to your own sin. Mm. Uh, because if you do not, and, and by the way, the sins of others who committed against you mm -hmm. in your own childhood, mm -hmm. because if you do not, you are going to retain false beliefs that live with you for centuries or even millennia. I have seen people with these beliefs, with these beliefs thousands of years after they first imbibed the belief and they still believe them and they are still in the first few spheres of the spirit world unable to progress because they cannot give them up. Yeah. And that's a very sad choice to make that's out of harmony with love of yourself even. Yeah. So I'd recommend any person who's having all of these questions about and postulating all of these ideas on different religious th viewpoints and who, uh, who to, to consider what, what we're saying. Also, please bear in mind, if you are sending in questions to us, if we receive questions that are argumentative, it's highly unlikely that we are going to respond to them. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because we love ourselves and we do not wish to enter arguments with other people who are demonstrating already by their questions and by their emails that they have no desire to listen to another point of view that's loving. They only have a desire to present their own unloving point of view. Yeah. And so I would recommend to people who send in these kind of emails, please do not expect a response. <laughs> so I would suggest don't bother to send them <laughs> and only send emails to us or request to us if you uh, have a truly inquisitive desire to understand truth and a truly inquisitive desire to uh, have a better understanding of love because we will respond to those kind of questions. Absolutely. Now we've responded to this particular question mostly because we receive these kind of questions very frequently yeah. and we wanted to state firstly all of the things about reincarnation that we believe are false but secondly we wanted to see show the relationship between emotions and belief systems and thirdly we wanted to give you an example of if you wish us in future to have answers to questions this is not the kind of email to send us no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I hope that's been clear and, and, uh, yeah. and we can 
and we can proceed from there on different some different subjects with people who have an openness to hear the truth just as we gave feedback to Courtney yesterday yeah. who certainly had a much more open heart to receiving some truth. And this certainly makes for a, a more free-flowing discussion between the two of us when we have those kind of more yes. sincere questions. Yeah. With these ones where people are um, make, trying to make a point before many many points before they oh, even it's ask it's so the difficult question. because there's so many things that are wrong yeah. in the email that you've yeah. got to dissect it like we have and we could have even gone further we could have dissecting almost every word and you yeah. know uh, just in order to get to answer four yeah. questions yeah. that could be answered in five to ten minutes if yes. the person was open emotionally to yeah. hearing the answers yeah. and it's a sad fact uh, of our human condition that mm -hmm. we are so emotionally blocked up mm -hmm. with all this unhealed emotion that we're incapable of even asking a question that's open let alone receiving the answer yeah 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 so true mm. anyway i hope this discussion's helped many people yes um, and and we hope too catherine that it's helped you yes and, and Please do not feel that we have anything against you because we certainly do not. Mm -mm. And uh, and uh, and I and you know I, we do hope that we meet you at some point in the future. So please don't yes. feel that we uh, that we feel against that at all. But but you do have a number of issues that you need to address if you're sincerely going to practice things God's way. And hopefully today's feedback has given you some opportunities to address those issues. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Mm. Mm.